put that gold medal into the gym bag. And she's now <laughs> back out into the arena, ready for the big final. She qualified with the third highest score. Krishna is in this final as well. Fane, Jordash. First of all, we just welcome the judges. Two judging panels, the difficulty and the execution. If you were judging, Chris, would you rather be on the difficulty or the execution panel? Um, probably the execution. The difficulty, you're just adding up what they do. But actually, you sort of have the power, the difficulty, the D panel, because if they do a move, say, these gymnasts do on beam, a sheep jump, where you're meant to touch your head with your, with your feet, now it's you, the two D judges, who decide, did she touch her head? If she does, we'll give it the E, which is worth 0.5. If she didn't, we give it nothing, so it's 0.5 less on her start value. So they have the they have the power. So perhaps I drop one of those. Well, you, I, you know what? <laughs> I thought you'd be preferred to be in charge, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> if you were deciding whether or not, then surely yeah. that's what you'd. Yeah, you'd actually, do. having described it, I think I would. <laughs> well. Catalina Panor is in this final. She uh, had the highest score yesterday in the team final. Jordash as well. Kamova. Hannah Whelan. Great Britain will be going in fifth. But I think this is going to be quite an exciting final. Russia were a little bit shaky yesterday on this piece of apparatus. You'd normally put money on them being secure, balletic, in control. But those, acrobatically, they were OK. But the presentation, Chris, was shaky. Wasn't well, it? this is where I think if we're going to see a dominance from Romania, this is where it will come. They've qualified at first and second here in the same way that the Russians qualified first and second on bars. The Romanians did first and second on beam. There's definitely different nations that specialise on different apparatus. Uh, but Jordash, who qualified first, has got a very difficult first tumble. She does a backflip into full twist, and she came off on that yesterday in the team competition. So there will just be that little seed of doubt in her mind. We've always thought the Romanians were punchy and determined, but yesterday they had something else on B, didn't they? They had the grace, the elegance, the control, and the dominance of that apparatus to go with it. And I think they'll carry that confidence through into this final. Oh, yes, I think so as well. Here she is, the girl of the moment. Victoria Kamova just fresh from the medal podium from bars. It's the Greek gymnast. Rossi, Yuna Dauphiné. Such a shame for her on bars, just gone. She wanted to put that out of her mind and try to hit this beam with power and confidence. Great Britain's Hannah Whelan. Israel. Save the medalist from bars. Stacey Krishna. But how wonderful it would be to see this girl up on the medal podium. She qualified second. She was brilliant yesterday on beam. She's got a long way though. She has. Interestingly, Romanians are first and last, so they can uh, play the tactical game. Interestingly, this draw is done like a few months in advance, really, and they're just literally drawn out of a hat, so the qualification order, they pull out one and say, so the first gymnast will end up going fifth, and that's how it's worked out. So, Larissa Jordash, Romania. Highest qualifier. This her first senior European Championships. Yes, 
Massa. The highest difficulty qualification. And she was the dominant junior in Europe last year. But this is the important thing. This element, backflip, full twisting, tuck back, and she's held it. Little step back, but she did very well. Double spin, just a little wobble. But those are two very difficult elements under her belt already. Big, high, leap with a half turn. Super, free walk over, but she's missed the link. Little stop there, add a bit of dance as she didn't make the link into the backflip. Front somersault into the tuck back. Very positive in all her movements, sharp in the dance work. But she does look just a little bit jittery. We've come to expect almost mechanical execution. And today she looks just a little bit human. But very strong work, lots of difficulty. Here the big dismount. Triple twist out of a round off flip. That was fantastic. What a start to this final. Unbelievable. Triple twist and all the way around. Absolutely square. Lovely work. But she did have the side touch of the jitters. She did. But too difficult. I mean, you pointed out the very difficult move to start with. But then that double twist, I mean, that's a tinker as well. Yeah, she's got... Uh, this is incredible, and you can forgive her that pace. That's such a move to full twist. So many come to grief on that. But there were other little areas where she demonstrated she was in control of the tumbling, but just as with the Russians yesterday, some of the linking moves were a little bit nervous, but this was fantastic all the way around. Look at the shoulders. Triple twist. Really very special dismount, that, isn't it? Just incredible. If you cut the bottom half of that screen off, you would have thought she was on the floor. Yeah. You know, you don't think she's balancing on something that's just 10 centimetres wide. Now, she had a start value of 6.7 in qualification, but she missed just a couple of her links. The free walkover normally goes into a backflip and layout, which means she's probably lost 0.2 on um, bonus marks. So it'll be interesting to see what the D score is. As I say, qualification was 6.7. Lovely split, though, in the leaps. She uh, scored the highest all-around score of any of the gymnasts in the team competition, a 60. Three marks ahead of anyone else. So she's a very exciting young prospect. Watch this. Round off, backflip, punch, triple twist. <laughs> there was no doubting that was round, was there, Mitch? Super, really great to watch. Having a few bandages attached there, that's not for an injury that she's picked up on beam. It's uh, she's in the floor final next 15.1 six four difficulty. So 0.3 down on qualification, but still one of the highest scores we'll see. Or can Victoria come over? Let the rest a few ghosts on this piece of apparatus. It cost her the world all around. She had the presence. Very solid in the front, Sammy. Pulling hard. Excellent. The two Sammies. Very square, very strong. So this is a great start. And the Arabian. Oh, big battle. She won it. That standing Arabian so difficult. setting up the spin and drifting through it with great control. Little flicker. And another. Really courageous in the sheep. Oh, and look, almost away. And those nerves haven't gone away, have they?
two flicks. Oh, and a double Arabian, which didn't pay off. A whole mark deduction right at the end. But she was unsettled all the way through. She started really well, I thought, really, really positive, the best I've seen her. But it's almost like she sort of lost a bit of concentration after the first two or three lengths. She's a very emotional gymnast. I mean, a lot of kids would, a lot of gymnasts would walk off still with a smile, however bad they feel inside. But she's very, she shows her emotions and sort of shows it during the routine as well, doesn't she? See the wobble after the tuck back. There was no need either. She was on. She just sort of wavered mentally. On the side, somersault the same. She was on, but she just didn't follow the rules and put the arms positively in the right place. Maybe she'd started thinking about the big dismount already, because it is a big dismount, the double flip into double Arabian. Here we go. One, two, up, half turn double front it's that's massive and it was almost like halfway through she started thinking gosh I've got the big dismount and worrying about it well it started with the standing Arabian the problem started there that's when she first had to battle and had finished with the double version so that's unfortunate but some fantastic work she's so stylish so classy she she gets very few deductions for bent legs or anything like that. It literally will just be for wobbles and falls. Thirteen point one. Two marks behind Jordash. It's not to be on me. Siliki Milusi from Greece, sixth highest qualifier, 18 years old. Floats them out. The layout, back somersault. One of the most impressive ways to get onto the beam. Free cartwheel, oh, but you have to stay on for a bit longer than that. End of the first length. Just let the body tension go. Nicely into the change leg split sleep and tuck back. The sheep jump. <coughs> Success on the beam is all about keeping the middle muscles tight, controlling the body, keeping it over the base. She's an expressive gymnast, got some very nice work on the beam. Change leg to ring, the head going back. Oh, but that leap was a little bit flat. Super free walk over, links into the backflip and layout somersault. That was confident and firmly performed. She's very smooth in all the work, perhaps a tiny bit slow in comparison to some of the smaller, younger gymnasts. Here, the big dismount, the double pike. Oh, and not quite enough power off the hands into the round off. Some lovely, elegant touches, though. And uh, it's unfortunate. The course ability you mentioned, Chris, so vital, and she just didn't seem when she did come off. She didn't have a chance to set it, but uh, it's a pity. Everything all seems a little tentative, doesn't it, after come over? You, you know, once somebody's had a bit of a bad time up there, you're thinking, oh, is that going to happen to me? And... Yeah, it's a bit strange. I mean, normally you think within a team that goes, but it actually does within the final, I think. Lovely start. And that's not the easiest of starts. She did it really well. And here you can see there was no fixing. At all on the court, which is why she's finished on the deck. But she does have some delightful touches. She's quite brave at times as well, really attacked the thing. That was nice. <laughs> 
Well, she had confidence on that. Thinking somebody who'll be taking confidence from this will be Hannah Whelan because she qualified in fourth and she looks seen an opening now. Yes, all to be. I mean, 12.9. Lucy, third at the moment. So Hannah Whelan has done two competitions already, full competitions. She's had a very heavy schedule. So, uh, you know, Dauphiné didn't have much fun on bars. She could medal here on B. Score to beat 15.133. Very measured and controlled in the start. It's about keeping composure now and putting all the mistakes of the others behind her. And did that very well indeed. Leg up to show she was in control at the end. Difficult in a cell too. Nicely done. She's showing that she's in charge of the apparatus at the moment. Still. the one spin that time. Really attack the leaps, but no serious error. Lots of preparation, lots of thought. Oh, and she undercooked the double fight. The third gymnast to come a cropper on dismount. Well, you know, it's the end of a long week of competition, and I think the little ones in the juniors today were absolutely magic on being. But these older gymnasts, the, you know, the body takes a bit more of a toll of third, fourth day of competition, and they all look just a little bit weary, don't they? Super double spin, lots of control. There was a lot of very good work in this routine. She would have hoped to have held that leg up and swung straight through into the leap for a bonus. She had to take the little stop, but I think she shows fabulous control on the beam. That jump half turn into handstand and then walk over out. Held the leg up into the free walk over, but this, short of energy, folded the shoulders forwards into the double pike. Now we've got Hannah Whelan next up. Grishna is to come as well, as is Katalina Panor. So still pl plenty of gymnasts to come who could medal. 13.366 puts Dufonet into silver medal position at the moment. A lot of gymnastics to go in this final. So Jordash leads Dufonet. Silver, come over, third. My guessing is those two gymnasts aren't going to make the medals, but we'll see. Jordash, standout winner so far. How will the British all-around champion react to this final? Well, Hannah's been the absolute rock of the British team. Lovely free walk over into the change leg leap, into the half turn. Well connected so far. The sheep jump. This is the important series. Free cartwheel into the layout somersault. Very well performed. She's worked every apparatus for Great Britain in both qualification and team final, Hannah. Now, this is important. One, two, 
She had to stop at one and a half, so she won't quite get the difficulty in qualification. She made it right round two and a half, but very smoothly. She's a very elegant gymnast. Lovely leap. We only saw the landing. We have to hope that it was good at the top. Now. Has to make sure of the landing we've seen. Enough dismounts come to grief. She has to watch the beam, plant her feet, lift into the two and a half. No problem there, Hannah. A really good performance. Stop the rot. Well, she's going to need a good 14 to medal here. Not phased at all. She saw an opening, an opportunity, and went for it. Great attitude. Nice through the half turn. The walk up, a tiny little adjustment there, but all the way through, she wanted it to work. That was a difficult combination, very key. Just a tiny adjustment. This was determination. And as you say, Chris, she's worked every apparatus throughout this competition. Just a little hop at the finish. Good performance. What a way to finish her Europeans, eh? Well, she's not finished yet because she's in floor final as well, but that was a very, very controlled performance. When all around were falling, she did a great <laughs> job then. I'm sure Dash is happy, but... Wow. This is a future hold for Hannah Whelan find out 14.333 currently in second to threatening gymnasts to come let's just hope she can hang on in there Suta, 24-year-old. Second final. She was in the vault as well. Very careful. So oh, she just, just seemed to bail out. If it doesn't feel right, there's nothing you can do. Started very quietly. Oh, and she battled with that one to stay on. and sharp and crisp. Seems to have settled down now. Far too late, unfortunately. Oh, and she's off again. Once the rot sets in, Chris, it's so hard, isn't it? Very difficult, and now... You know, you're the only person working in this great big arena. All eyes are on you. And she really needs to salvage a bit of pride. She did that with that lovely leap. And of course, it makes the, the routine seem like an age as well. Focus now. Garnering the energy, making the double pipe, and making good some of the damage. It's very hard to keep going when you've had that sort of episode. Especially when all eyes in the whole arena are on you, you know, these individual apparatus finals are just happening as they go. Such a shame. Yes, she just, just went wrong right from the beginning, really. This, the change leg with a half turn, she looked well on. I, if I was the coach, I'd be most dischuffed with that because she looked as though she could stay on. This one, a different matter. She was offline and there's not much you can do. It's a very difficult element, the round off layout somersault. And then, of course, the side somersault. But she pulled herself together well. This is very difficult, the tour jeté with the half turn. Get a, quite a good marks for doing that. She 
Jordash getting herself ready for floor as well. Feeling quite happy, I think, with that performance for herself on beam. 15.133, somebody's got to do a really impressive performance to challenge that. Philosophical about it all. Well, a couple of performances away. Two thirds, twelve point zero six six. Anastasia Grishna, silver on bars. Going for a medal here on beam. She was the fifth highest qualifier. But Hannah Whelan currently has a score of 14.333 and is in the silver medal position. Christina looks very focused. Lovely round off, straight somersault. You can see the focus in the eyes. And very nicely performed leap with the head back. We call it a change leg to ring. Half turn, walk over, leg up, into the sides. Oh, into the side somersault. She went for the connection, but just offline now. She needs to settle herself, the illusion turn. Such style, you know, she never moves without every toe pointed, full extension. Double spin, oh, that was beautifully done. Free walk over into the backflip and the layout somersault, lots of speed and power. Now, she hasn't given in. Big dismount, double pike, just a little pace forward. It might have had a fall, but there was a lot of good work as well. Well, as we say then, 14.333 is Hannah Whelan's score. Dauphiné, 13.366. She's in third. So a nervous wait here because the last gymnast, Panor, is likely to succeed, I would suggest. Indeed. So if she goes ahead of Hannah Whelan, Hannah won't get a medal. If she doesn't, she will. Mm -hmm. She started with such determination at this. Very impressive. And you really thought nothing was going to go wrong all the way through, in control, and then this, the you connection. Could, you could see the heels were right off the beam. There was nothing she could do. But then she got back on as if nothing, no more blips. Great dismount. It's going to be very, very tight. One whole mark. 14.066. She's behind Hannah Whelan. What about that? Oh, what a fantastic... It's not fantastic for gymnasts to fall, but Hannah Whelan so deserves some success and reward for all her hard work. Well, there you are. Hannah is guaranteed a medal. But what colour? The last competitor in this beam final. Catalina Panor. Can she bring a marvellous presence to it? Settle the whole final down now. Well, if you want experience, you're looking at former gold in the Olympics on this piece. And it would be such a finish just to put a stamp on it. Got through that successfully. Now then, double spin, emphatic. Nicely in the half turn. Flip layout and no mistake with that. Shoulders and hips nice and square. She is absolutely <laughs> determined here. Of the first wobble. A little bit nervous, but that was good. Such control here.
of them. Finishes and finishes with a double pack of pace forward. She did, she had an opportunity there. She could stamp her authority, stamp her control of the apparatus, but she started off quite nervously. Well, she commanded every inch of that five metre beam, but I think she's conceded. Yes, I think that big wobble right on the first length will probably have cost her the gold medal. This was a fabulous performance. This is the leap where she takes the head right back and she just, you lose sight of the beam and you have to recover yourself. But she did just that. And what a variety of elements she showed us. Not just acrobatic skills, but balance, leaps, lovely fluent style, all finished with such a confident dismount. You see how the chest is right up on landing. She really is a virtuoso on the beam. Let's have a look and see. There's a few screens going round. We need confirmation of the score. Well, Romania are happy whichever way round it's gone. Indeed, indeed. But which way will it go? <laughs> That's the question. There's confirmation that Catalina Pinot, the last gymnast, takes gold ahead of a teammate. Well, obviously it wasn't that much of a big wobble, but obviously. what about that? Great Britain's Hannah Whelan taking a bronze in the Beam European final. Absolutely fantastic, and Pinot is wonderful on this apparatus. I just thought that maybe the wobble would be penalised so much, but... At but obviously not. The good bit outweighed the bad. You know what? She brought a regal presence to that whole competition. She really looks so good. And I agree with you, Chris. I thought you may have overdone it with that wobble and robbed a goal. But that's great. She has such fabulous presence. Great for the sport. And absolutely wonderful for Great Britain. Hannah Whelan in third place. She's been, as I say, the mainstay of the British team. So we're in the absence of Beth Tweddle, she's led from the front. And uh, she really is a fabulous beam worker. So that's just rewards. Well, it was an edgy final, and I'm sure Hannah would have been on the edge of her seat all the way through that, but goodness me, I'm absolutely delighted, as I'm sure you are too, Chris. That's just, just what you needed. Well, yes, it is really and truthfully what the whole British programme needs, because you want to come back from a, a championship like this with medals. Both our junior and senior teams were fourth, which were fantastic. Well, that will indeed for the spring in the step of Hannah Whelan. She's now going for floor. What can she do here? We've got Rebecca Tunney in here as well. Catalina Pinot, who just took gold on beam, is also in this final. Second up, too, so she hasn't got too much time to recover. Indeed. And let's not discount Vanessa Ferrari as well. No, this is going to be a big final on floor here. Ferrari's only final of the championships. And uh, she's been, the Italians throughout really have been on fire. And, uh, and she's, she's led them. And what's good about Ferrari, she was there in the great days for the Italian team. And she was really key to its success, wasn't she? 2006 European champions. That's she right, there she is in red. Of course, she was a great success, Vanessa Ferrari, when she was little, tiny child, really. And uh, the Olympics came just at the wrong moment for her when she'd started to grow, pick up a few injuries. But unlike many gymnasts who at that point throw the towel in, she's battled on and come back out the other side. And I think she's going to be a real force at this Olympics. This will be her Olympics. But she's also adapted her routines to suit a new physique, which is another great sign. That's she's right. She's well coached and she's really determined to make her impression. And of course, we're following here the top gymnast from Belgium who opens this floor final.
Yeah, Julie Crockett had a little bit of a wobble actually in the team final yesterday. So it'll be interesting to see if, you know, how she gets on here in front of a home crowd. Wonderful. How fantastic to see two British gymnasts in the European floor final. Well, actually, absolutely, you know, in Beth's absence, you wonder whether we'll have any finalists, and here we are with two in the floor final, so it's it's tremendous, and, and we're bringing home a medal as well, at least one. We'll go back to Beam, Chris. Have we ever won a medal? Have the girls ever won a medal on Beam before? Because it has been their big challenge piece. It has it? been their big challenge piece, and I don't think we have. I... Well, that's fabulous then, if she's done that. No, I feel fairly confident to say that we haven't won a beam medal before. There's Vanessa Ferrari, former world all-round champion. And Rebecca Tunney, one of the three gymnasts in the team from Liverpool. Just took the silver on beam. And there's Hannah as well, fresh from her bronze medal winning performance. Gymnast in this women's floor final from Belgium, competing in front of the home crowd, Julie Crockett. Final, Julie Crockett, 17 years old, she's fifth on floor of the last European Championships. And the Belgian team have done fabulously here, first time in team final. Lovely technique, huge, cool twisting, double pike. She looks like she means business. Double twisting front, bounce out into a leap. leaps very determined approach two and a half oh and you could see from her face there was a slight worry about it but this is her moment she's going to work to the end So quick across the car, I thought she was going to burn a hole in the carpet. She was so fast across the top of it. Such a pity, isn't it? So 
seven gymnasts to go. She just crossed Catalina Panor, who will be the next to go, but yeah, such a shame. And too big a deduction, really. This tumbling was, yeah, sorry, uh, so exciting in that tumbling. Look at that full twisting double. So fast, so quick. Really full of energy. Pulling hard, two and a half twists, and that's when it came to grip. So difficult to spot and rebound from two and a half twists. You need to set the twist up, plenty of height and plenty of time, but the double fight was a cracker. She's still puffing. You can see the energy a floor routine like that takes. One minute, 30 seconds of constant movement. So 12.866. That won't threaten for a medal. was the European champion on the floor back in 2004. She got a gold in the team, gold on beam. Can she get the triple here? She graced this with a great performance on beam. And, oh, a little out of control. The four spins, it's not an easy ride at all. Here we go. Double layer, beautifully done. Acceleration, two whips, flick into full twisting double, this is lovely. The beam she gave us grace here, she's giving us power, lots of grip. Audience totally with her. Big pull through the flick, triple twist is round. I tell you, the tumbling is great. Warming as she goes to selling the routine. Very confident. Big moment. Has to be a big tumble. High in the double pike with just a tiny pace back. But what about that very early drop out of the screen first? Well, it's a benchmark to set, though. Yeah, no, that was a, that's a fabulous routine. It's got all the tumbling. She had a little bobble on the quadruple spin, but only a point one. They might not give the quadruple, so maybe the start value will be point two down, but. That was that was a power performance. Such power indeed. Harnessing. She's not a small gymnast, so she's really harnessing a lot of power there. Longer levers, and she really used it to great effect. Fabulous opener to this final. There we are. This is the quad spin four, and she fell out of it a bit. But then she followed it up with this double straight holding the body in the straight position. It travels so slowly when it's straight that you have to be so powerful to get right the way around. And then she shows us she can twist as well. Three twists. She really shows versatility, maturity. She shows women's gymnastics at its best. But well, you think maybe that spin could have cost a point three because she'd lose two on the difficulty and then point one in the execution? Yes, yes, possibly. She. Well, let's have a look what she qualified with. Uh, she qualified with six a two. six two star value. So we'll see how they how they come up with it. But uh, I think that the youngsters will have to be at their best to beat that. Tumbling so impressive be what they're deliberating now whether or not she got round four times it's unfortunate too it's right at the start when you're focused on it and it's such an obvious error even though not a major one it was obvious is the option just a triple twist a or triple spin, or yes, the, there's yes, no such yes. thing as a three and a half uh, they would only give a three they'd only give a three with a little bit of a deduction for over spinning it but uh, I, they put it at the beginning because not many people can do a, a quad. So it's there to show, look how in control I am. Of course, it backfires a bit if you're not. But uh, it was a good routine. 
Well, she's given a six for difficulty, so down point two with a score of 14.6, double three. That is indeed the score to beat. Yes, but I'm sure, and that would have been the spin that cost her. Maria Vivchikova, 17 years old. Hasn't made a floor final at Euros or world level before. She qualified with a difficulty of 5.8. The gymnast from Ukraine, nearly always beautiful, but very prone to mistakes. Quite a simple start there, two and a half twist. Oh, and there's the big tumble. Handspring double front. Landed beautifully straight into a jump. Very classical. Oh, but the triple twist wasn't really round. The feet were only two and three quarters. And that spin fell out before it completed the double. Very classy. Very classical music. Needs an impressive final tumble. Here's the double tuck. Just a little low with the chest. Some very lovely work in that, but just a few errors. Not White going to penetrate the medals, I don't think. Some powerful tumbling on show. And there, she just overcooked the two and a half there. But this was great. Handspring, double front, and that's no easy skill, and to bounce out of it. And watch the leg drop just a fraction early. She looks a little disappointed with herself here. No, she could have performed a tiny bit better, but they were only small errors. There was a lot of very good work. It's a Romanian party, though. There's no Russian here to challenge, is there? So it could be very interesting. It could be indeed. Petrikova scores 13.466. Difficulty of only 5.1, nearly 0.9 less than Panor. So our attentions turn then to Vanessa Ferrari. She was a European champion on floor back in 2007. And a world champion in the all-round. And she took gold, the Olympic test event, not so long ago on this piece of apparatus. So she's on form, Mitch. Oh, yeah, this is uh, powerful. Double, double, a little bit deep on the landing. But that's an example. She has adapted her work. She used to do it straight, and here in the tap position. Oh, and then a full in backhand. <laughs> Very powerful start to this Florex. Plenty of time, the one and a half twist into full. She still has that power. She's adapted it a little, and that was lovely. Nice little graceful touch there.
She's shown us she still has the will, the determination, and still has the technique. Just a little face back on the double fight. Well, she survived the difference in shape, the maturity. She's still there, and she's still a contender. Well, she did burst onto the scene as a right little powerhouse, and I tell you what, she hasn't lost that. No, this is this is the first time in a long time we've seen her using the double twisting, double back. Uh, it's taken the time to get that back. When she was a junior, she could bang them out, but that was that was a controlled performance, mature performance. She's 21 now, and really has grown into her maturity. Well, the score to beat is 14.633. Well, she, in qualifying, scored. Vanessa had a 6.1 start value in qualifying, and if she achieves that, it will be the highest start value of the day. That, I think, will be a fair-sized deduction, the big step forward, because she really was well under-rotated, but this she did really well. One and a half into the full twist in front. Really quite difficult, and the leaps were very good. The head was right back in the ring position. Lifts up very high, shows the splits possibly might think that some of that turn was done on the floor and they'll deduct for that but this the double pike dismount little skip backwards it wasn't faultless but it was very good <laughs> seen Rebecca Tony there she'll be ready to go as soon as Ferrari score is in 14.4, that's 0.233 behind Panor. So Ferrari currently in second. Nevchikova, 13.466. Now Rebecca Tunney did score a 14 in qualification. That's the current leader. 14.633 her score. Awesome. We go then. The youngest member of the senior British squad, Rebecca Tunney, is 15, Burns at the city of Liverpool. Absolutely brilliant, and it's such a shame about that step. But how costly will that be, Chris? Well, 0.3 for the step and a 0.1 because it was out of the floor, so 0.4. But you know, hey, others have had steps on landing as well. So uh, I thought that was a great performance with our coach here, Claire Duffy, part of the team of coaches at Liverpool. Superb technique, the angle right out of the shoulders in the flick. But there's lovely the whip over into the double turn. That's a fabulous start. And all of her flicks, just watch how she keeps the angle out there when she catches. Great conversion. She's a slight girl, but such power, Christine. 
Yes, she's fast, she's powerful, very hardworking as well. She wasn't a greatly celebrated junior. She's worked and worked and making her mark now as a senior. She gripped on, didn't she, for dear life there to try and keep that tumble in there. But... I think she just made it. That was the final one. Yeah. I think she just made it. Great job. So she needs over 13.466 to go ahead of Lipchikova. She'd be very disappointed if she didn't get that, wouldn't she, Chris? Oh, I think so, I think so. But, uh, you know, this is a big step up for, for Becky. And uh, it's just really interesting to see how both she and Ruby Harold have grasped their opportunity. 13.8. Rebecca up into third at the moment, 5.7 for difficulty. So Panor still the leader. Kadash, her teammate, is the next gymnast to go. Three gymnasts left in this final. One of them is Great Britain's Hannah Wheeler. This is Larissa Jordash, 15. Teammate Tanor just nick the gold off it and beam. Can she do the same to her here on the floor? Hold on to your hats. There's plenty of power here. Look at the acceleration of double double and absolutely popped it out. Incredible. Still the power. Look at this. Full twisted. Oh, almost overcooked it but kept it in. Oh, mind boggling. They only two temples. And she's working with such confidence. Look, can't wait to get going into the next temple. A whip out of old, superb through the twists. No doubting there. Enjoying this complex four and made it look easy. <laughs> well, just making sure it's in a Romanian party for the medals. Double tuck, super. Brilliant. Lively, vivacious, fabulous way. Unbelievable for 15. Just extraordinary gymnastics. She's light, she's fast. But you also get a great sense of fun with the routine. That's lovely, look at that. Experience and the future. Is it a gold age? I think it is. Now this she did really well. Double twisting, double back, and lands chest up. Not a problem. That was, that's the best I've seen her perform it in this championships. Straight back into a full twisting, double pike back somersault. She had that little stutter, didn't she, on that second tumble? That might be what cost her, but I think, well, we'll see. It's the judge's choice. Just a little step to the side there as well. Well, Panor had her little wobbles as well on that. She did, she did, you're right. Well, we think it's Rubinia 1 and 2, but in which order? They're not sure. It needs all the skill of the judges to separate them. Jordash in qualifying had quite a bit higher star value. Her star value was 6.4. Now, Panor today has only been given a star value of 6. So, if it's as in qualifying, she should be able to, to squeeze those extra tenths. She performed that routine to take the gold medal for the Romanian team yesterday. Probably not quite as well as that, I think. Tavian Ballou. 
Jordas has got it. 15.2 double three. Wow, a massive score. And very well deserved. A really sparkly performance and great contrast of maturity and youth from the Romanian team. Goal the pace. Brilliant. That's a circuit, that blend of youth and experience. What a team they could build from that. They're really back in business, aren't they? Look at that, that's lovely. And it's totally, absolutely genuine and heartfelt. Great to see it. I think Panor being back has really been a great impetus for the Romanian team. But is it too early to celebrate? Great Britain's Hannah Whelan is up next. All around British champion. English floor champion. 19. And she has another medal for the bronze she got on beat. Now, whip into triple twist. Lovely and clean. the one and a half into the two and a half she does just what's needed <laughs> fabulously expressive has really grown into this floor routine well very original dance, fabulous landing there on the double back. She's selling it well. Just hope she's kept the energy right to the end. Come on, Hannah. Lift up high, double pike is there. What a performance, a real professional performance there, Matt. Well, I tell you what, I am really excited, OK? She scored 14.333 in qualification. She needs over 14.4 to go up into bronze. And whatever that score, that oozed confidence, didn't it? She really attacked it, she loved it. The choreography was great. Oh, come on, that would be fabulous to take two bronze medals home from this competition. <laughs> it, it's on, a Chris. really... Well, I love the floor routine, I've seen it a lot, but it's really different, and she obviously enjoys performing it, which is the key, isn't it? Well, this is a nail by there. Oh, look at that. With her coach, Amanda Redden, of course, we're more often used to seeing her with Beth Treadle. She's Beth's coach as well. And that's the score that's under threat. Wow. We'll give the judges all the time they need just to check and double check. <laughs> but she really, enjoyed it, yeah. She really attacked it. Look at this. Triple twist. Little hop to the side, but such confidence all the way through. And it wasn't just the tumbling, it was the way she danced away, projected, really sold the routine. And, Went for it. Lovely combination. Two and a half twists there. Lovely work. She gave it her all, Chris. Well, come on. This would just be absolutely magical. It's there! What about that? 14.533. Hannah Whelan has a bronze medal. She snatched it off Ferrari. There's one gymnast left to go. Well, incredible. Wow, that was special, and it was a special performance, you do have to say. Now, we have one gymnast to go. Let's hope the party is not going to be spoiled. Well, it's Marta Fian Kuleta. She did qualify outside of the top eight because of the rule of two gymnasts per country. That's why she's here, 24 years old. She'd be anxious to make a good impression, and that was just what she did on the first sample. Arabian double. Every gym 
best dreams of a European final. So it's the last we'll see in these championships. Oh, might have just crept down there. Nonsense. red flag. You see the red flag, so cost so, induction indeed. That's a point one. It was a good performance. It wasn't it didn't have any huge highlights, but it was very solid. round off into the double Arabian, the Arabian being the half turn in and then the double front somersault. On the front somersault walk out, she doesn't use backflips very often. Most things come out of a round off, which is unusual. Another of the gymnasts using multiple spins. But she did pull out of the side just a little bit. And we hang on anxiously here to see whether this score is going to push Hannah Whelan out of the bronze medal. So 14.5 double three is Hannah's score. Still there is a freshness about them. Their whole attitude is different. Just goes to show the age range, the difference in that competition. You know, you look at Joe Dash and you see a gymnast like Fiona Coletta. She's married. Yep, 24 years old, married, competed in the Olympics. far have we come Chris it used to be to make a final was great for Great Britain and here we are yes we possibly are. two bronze medals to take that's over. right and we should at this stage oh here we are well she's in seventh with a score of 13.4 difficulty of 5.3 which means that Jordash is the European floor champion Penor will take silver and Hannah Whelan gets another bronze that is an absolutely sensational result. Well, outside of the team, as far as individual apparatus finals are concerned, Beth is the only British gymnast to medal. So, you know, Hannah leaves Brussels with two. Sensational result for her. Well, what a feeling that is for the British camp, building up to the Olympic Games. It's a sign we've got depth. It's a sign that it's, uh, it's not just the weight on Beth's shoulders. It's great to see that. Confirmation then of the women's floor final. Jordash, gold. It's gold and silver, one and two for Romania. Catalina Panotic, silver. Hannah Whelan, bronze. Second bronze of the championships. Rebecca Tunney in fifth. And I should say, Matt, at this stage, that the juniors, our best junior, Gabby Jupp, also got a bronze on floor this championships earlier today. So we're making quite a name for ourselves in Great Britain as producing good gymnasts on floor. What would have been your prediction? I mean, hearing, obviously, that Beth was out of this championships, what would have been your prediction on medals? Oh, I think we would have all said we've got to fight very hard. I mean, Hannah is very good on beam, but it's, the beam is the sort of piece that you can never bank on because you only have to have the slightest error and, and you're off. 
Um, she's been threatening on floor as well, so I, I don't think we would have come expecting, but I think we might have come hoping. You know what, they've built up over the past, well, during this decade, really, the British women have built up a reputation for being reliable and going through as a team. And this is the icing on the cake. Now they've got the medals to go with it outside of Beth, of course, it's fabulous. And this is just a sign. This has been building up towards this. And this is so deserved. They've been so consistent and so hard working. Well, we're going to have medal ceremonies now for the beam and floor. It's been a pretty dominant uh, championships for Romania. <laughs> Both of them pop up there to take their applause. They've come such a long way from sour faces and disappointment, haven't they, the Romanians, to see this. Wonderful picture of Hannah there. Same three gymnasts up on the podium as it was on B. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Which is interesting in that Hannah has been the only gymnast able to sort of live with the Romanians. So they're just going to stay out there, I guess. <laughs> well, you cut this you... three. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, to beat Vanessa Ferrari is no mean achievement. A former, was she world champion as well as European champion? Yes, yes. On the all round, yeah. So what an achievement. Yeah. Put a feather in her cap. Amazing. Well, she's gonna, Hannah's going to have two medals around her neck in as many minutes. Absolutely fabulous, Matt. Seen Claire, Tony, uh, Claire Duffy in front of us, and she's hoarse. She's lost her voice. <laughs> she's coughing away. She must have been shouting on top of her voice. Look. Oh, she's still shouting at Claire Duffy. Where she get the voice from? So Great Britain's Hannah Whelan steps up onto the medal podium, absolutely beaming smile, and rightly so. Larissa <laughs> Jordash was leading the beam final all the way. Then her teammates snatched it from her. Incredibly confident performance. And confidence has been the key with the Romanian team. I mean, they've just exuded it throughout the whole of these championships. They have, and this, of course, their second individual gold medal. Won the vault. Now the beam. They won the team title. So, not a bad comeback from uh, two years ago when they were beaten into third place. To take four of the five titles. And they are then European champion Kathleen Panor. Silver goes to her teammate Jordash. But Great Britain's Hannah Whelan takes bronze on beat.
so the exact three gymnasts will now just swap positions slightly and then we'll go on with the results for the floor final. It says, it says a lot, actually, doesn't it, that uh, the consistency of work that the gymnasts have to have over these two apparatus. You said it before, though, man. She's to see Hannah. She's in great company there. I mean, that what a moment for her. And twice she's done it. Once again, Great Britain's Hannah Whelan steps up onto the medal podium to receive a bronze this time on floor. And a great reward and, you know, testimony to all the hard work and training, all the hundreds of routines done in training. Catalina Panor this time takes silver. But it's Romania one and two. She's happy to step to one side, I think, as well. She got the gold medal she wanted. It wouldn't surprise me at all to see her double up on Olympic medals. And her 15-year-old teammate, Alyssa Jordash, takes gold. And now you start to see her enjoy it. It's all starting to dawn. Absolutely. Competition is over. The last of the finals. She thinks to herself, yeah, I did all right. She did, especially as yesterday she had a little blip, a fall off the beam. So uh, she fought back incredibly well today. Didn't let it dent her confidence. Jordash takes gold, Catalina Penor, Silver, and Hannah Whelan writes herself into the history books, British gymnastics. So on a high. The amount of medals they've taken away from these championships. of this competition on BBC One next Saturday, 2.50. Then it's the turn of the men, the men's championships, on the red button on Sunday, the 26th of May. That's at 1.25. So that's the men's team competition. And then the apparatus finals will follow that on the Sunday. Highlights of the men's competition and the men's apparatus finals will be on BBC Two on Sunday, the 3rd of June. There's some dates for your diary. And that, just for the record, is at 2.30 p.m. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed Women's European Gymnastics Championships. Great Britain done incredibly well, Chris. Fantastic. You say the um, Romanians are on the high. I think the British camp as well. What a great competition. Thrills, a few spills and a great time for Great Britain.
And just thinking ahead, Mitch, uh, to the men. Looking forward to that. Great Britain are yeah, apparently I mean, very strong in training. Well, there are all sorts of rumours that they're, they're thinking gold. And uh, well, well, they've certainly got the work. They've got the work, but it all has to be come and done. And I think they'll, uh, they'll give a good fight. Well, we will leave you with that thought. It's very exciting. Can they outdo the women? Well, Great Britain, it's been a fantastic performance for the British team. Thank you all very much for listening, and we will see you what we do. Bye-bye. Let me just go and say well done.